Okay, so we're going to look at uh, the solutions of quadratic equations or creating quadratic equations. And here we've got um, a classic exam question where we've got to solve the equation with an answer to two decimal places. So it kind of cries out to uh, use the formula or uh, the method of completing the square, whichever you prefer. Uh, the formula is uh, probably the more direct, so we remember the formula from the front of our exam papers. Um, x equals uh, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a where we've got to remember that this has come from ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero so again just to remind you some key things when we're just solving quadratic equations we must have zero on one of these sides of the equals and then the other parts of the quadratic on the other side quadratic equation because it's got power two a uh, single letter x squared and x's and so forth. So we go through and we can see from here that the a value is 3, the b value is negative 5, and the c value is negative 7. Okay? Um, so we write that into our uh, formula. So we've got negative the b value, or we've got negative, negative 5. Again, advice always is put the any negatives in brackets. So we've got negative 5 squared because they place the b with its value. And then we're going to take away 4 times the a value times the c value, which was negative 7. Again, put it in a bracket. So it uh, helps call them um, less than problems when we uh, do things on calculators. So 2 times 3. So on our calculator then, we go through the process of, um, we've got negative negative 5, which means we're dealing with 5. Uh, we'll do the plus solution first, so plus uh, the square root of bracket, bracket negative 5, close bracket squared, uh, tick away 4 times 3 times bracket negative 7. And then we divide by 6. So we get an answer of x equals 2.57 to 3 significant figures. And then we can do the, uh, the minus version. So we have 5 take away square root of negative 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 7 uh, equals and then divide by 6 equals so x equals negative 0 0.907 so I think those are the answers so fairly straightforward process of uh, putting numbers into the formula and we just got to check that always check so we'll check the uh, negative value so the equation said we're doing 3 times the negative value in a bracket, so 0 0.907 negative uh, squared. Uh, take away 5 times bracket the negative number 0 0.907 and we're taking away 7. So we expect the answer to be close to 0, uh, which it is. So we can be fairly happy that worked. And then we do the same with the 2.57. So 3 times 2.57 squared. Uh, take away 5 times 2.57. Take away 7 equals, again, something close to 0. So we can be quite happy that those work. Um, then we read the question carefully, of course. And we always remember what it says. It says, give your answer to two decimal places. So although we wrote the answers to three standard figures, um, the first one is fine. But the second one, I've got to be careful because it was two decimal places. So that'll be negative 0 0.91. Okay, so that's using the quadratic equation formula. So now we've got a start question. Uh, this idea of uh, we've got to explain a little bit, show our workings out. And it says calculate the value of x. And we can see here we've got a right angle triangle. So we should always ask ourselves the question, uh, what do we know? Uh, we know it's a right angle triangle. It's got lengths on it. So it kind of shouts out to uh, wherever we're going to be thinking of Pythagoras and trigonometry. Um, and we look at this and we can see we're not dealing with any angles here. We're not asked to calculate an angle. We're not given an angle. So it must be Pythagoras. So we kind of write down what the Pythagoras rule is, just to remind ourselves what's going on. 
So the hypotenuse length C is always the longest side. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So the length of A squared plus the length of B squared must equal the length of C squared. They're asking us to calculate the value of X. So they're kind of shouting out at you, you know, please make an equation, uh, solve it, find the value. So here's the way we can make the equation. We can link these things through the Pythagoras rule. So it's telling me that I do the length of uh, one side squared plus the length of the other short side squared, and that must equal the length of the longer side squared. Just got to be careful here. This means x plus 5 times x plus 5, and this means x take away 2 times x take away 2. Squaring times the same thing by itself equals 100. We know what 10 squared is. Multiply the brackets out, so here we're going to get x squared plus 10x plus 25, and then here we're going to get x squared minus 4x uh, plus 4 equals 100. All right, negative 2 times negative 2 plus 4 and so forth. Um, bring everything together to make it as uh, simple as possible. So we've got 2x squared. We've got 10x's take away 4x's, so it's going to be 6x's. And then we've got 25 plus 4, which is 29. That equals 100. And then we're going to rearrange this to get it into the quadratic equation form, which is um, to be so many x squared plus so many x's plus a constant equal to 0. And that's the format we need uh, to start off solving the quadratic equations, unless we're using completing the square. But let's have a look what happens. So 2x squared plus 6x, and if we take away the 100 to make 0, then 29 take away 100 is negative 71. And that equals 0. So we ask ourselves um, to solve that. Now, in these kind of questions, quite often um, you'll find that this factorises. Uh, rather than use the formula. So we'll go for checking whether it factorises. And we recognise here that we've got something that involves um, negative 71. So it is a prime number. So the only way this is going to work is if we have negative 71 times 1. Um, and then hopefully we see very quickly that this isn't going to work. Um, it's not going to factorise because uh, we haven't got any nice combinations. That's going to give us uh, 6x in the middle. Um, unless I've missed 71, 7 and 1 is 8, so it's not going to be 3 times table. No, nope, I don't think it's going to do that, so we are going to have to use the formula. So we can go through the same thing as we did before. So we're going to say A is worth 2, B is worth 6, and C is worth negative 71. So the formula says that we're going to take the negative B value, so negative 6, we're going to add or minus the square root of the b value squared, take away 4 times the a value times the c value, so negative, so put it in a bracket, and all over twice the a value, so 2 times 2 is 4. So we go through. Uh, so we've got negative 6 plus square root, doing lots of things, so put it in a bracket, uh, 6 squared. Take away 4 times 2 times put a negative in, so negative 71, close bracket, equals, and then we're going to divide that by 4, equals uh, 4.64. So x equals 4.64. Um, now, the reason I don't need to do the takeaway uh, option is that this is about lengths. So I need a positive x value, so I only need to think about the positive x value. And of course, scientists should now see that that works. Um, really important I check. And the check, of course, is to go back to the Pythagoras section. And I should find that if I do 4.64 plus 5 all squared plus 4.64 take away 2 all squared, I should find that that equals 100. So let's have a look. We've got 4.64 plus 5. So I square that value plus bracket 4.64 take away 2 close bracket squared equals 99.89 well as we've rounded our uh, original answer to three significant figures then being close to 100 is fine so the answer there 4.64 um, the next question talks about uh, find the values of a and b 
and it's in the format of uh, completing a square. So basically we've had to change this into a square plus a number to get it to cancel out. So if we remember the technique guys, then we get the a value by half in the coefficient of x. So the number in front of the x. So we basically say that this is x plus 3 all squared. And the trick really is we half the coefficient of x, square it and take it away. So we've got to remember to do the take away 9 bit. So I'll just quickly remind you why we've got to do that. Um, x plus 3 squared means we're doing x plus 3 times x plus 3. Uh, so x squared, 3x, 3x plus 9. Now this bit here gives me x squared, this bit here gives me 6x. So that gives me the x squared plus 6x, but I get this extra bit. So that is extra, so I have to take it away to make sure it uh, disappears. So basically we're saying that x squared plus 6x is equivalent to x plus 3 all squared, take away 9. That's what it's equivalent to. Um, but then we've got to remember that there was a take away 3 in the original uh, sum, so we've got to take away 3. So x plus 3 all squared, take away 12. Now we can compare what they wanted. They wanted x plus a r squared plus b. So this tells me that the a value is 3. Now here we just got to be careful because it's negative 12 there so the b value must have been negative 12 because a plus minus next to each other will turn into a takeaway. So the b must have been worth negative 12. So a is 3 and b is negative 12. Now just remember what this means. Um, again it's all part of uh, recognizing that what you've done is we've shown what this graph would look like. An ordinary x squared graph, remember, does that. This has transformed the x squared graph. It's moved it three places to the left and it's moved it down 12 places. So basically, we know that that point has gone to negative 3 and then it's gone down to where negative 12 is. So this curve has decided to do this. And again, we've got something special. We know this value here must be negative 3 x is 0 at this point, so 0, 0, take away 3 is negative 3. So we basically get the idea that this is a quadratic curve where the minimum point is at the coordinates negative 3, negative 12, and this is sometimes known as the vertex of the curve, so the vertex of the minimum point is negative 3, negative 12. So that's partly why we do complete the square, it uh, kind of gives us a feel for what happens to the uh, graph of x squared plus 6x minus 3, we can sketch it. Um, it says hence or otherwise solve this equation. Well, give your answer in third form, gives you a clue. So basically, we're going to replace this with what we had here. So we've got x plus 3 all squared, take away 12 equals 0. Um, solve, well, we make x the subject, so we move everything across to the other side, to leave x where it is. But we've got to be careful to do things in the correct order, so we're going to cancel the take away 12 first by adding 12 to make it 0. So that makes that 0, but obviously that's going to change that side, so we're going to get x plus 3 all squared equals 12. Um, to cancel the square out, we square root, so we get some square root both sides, so we've got x plus 3 equals, now this is where we've got to be really careful guys, because when we square root, there are two possible answers, a positive and a negative. So it's got to be plus or minus square root of 12. And the last thing to do to get the x value is we're going to take away the 3. So that we end up with x equals negative 3 plus or minus root of 12. So the answer here then is the two possible answers. It's going to be negative 3 plus the root of 12 or negative 3 take away the root of 12. Because of the plus or minus, there's two possible answers. Adding the root of 12 or taking away the root of 12. So that's a reminder about completing the square and how we can then use that to sketch a quadratic graph and we could use complete and square then as a technique for solving uh, quadratics um, particularly when it's a unitary x squared and always one x squared. Another type of equation that um, will lead us into uh, quadratics is when we've got fractions involved. So the first thing to do here is to make this a single fraction uh, so that we can deal with the uh, rearranging uh, easier. Um, so we're going to make this a single fraction, uh, x times across there to make 10x, 2x uh, take away 1 times the 3, so remember we've got two things happening there, so we're going to multiply in a bracket, we've got a minus sign, and then we make the common denominator by multiplying the 
two denominators in the original fractions and that still equals three so we simplify the top bit so we've got 10 x's uh, we've got three times two x which is six x we're taking it away so it's going to be take away six x and then we've got take away three negative three times negative one so it's going to be plus three and when we multiply this we get two x squared uh, minus one times that is minus x and that still equals three so simplify again 10x is take away that is 4x is so it's 4x plus 3 and I'm going to bring the denominator across here so we're going to have 3 2x squared to take away x again we're moving two terms so we put in a bracket to move it and that means I can now rearrange this to get it into the quadratic form remember we need um, so many x squareds plus so many x's plus a constant equal to 0 so we need 0 somewhere there's positive x squared here, so I'm going to move everything that side. So we're going to take away 4x, and we're going to take away 3, and we're going to expand that bracket. 3 times 2x squared is 6x squared. 3 times negative x is negative 3x, but then we're taking away 4 more, so it's going to be negative 7x. And then we're doing uh, no numbers there, but we've got take away 3 comes across that side, so it's going to be take away 3 equals 0. Um, we ask ourselves, does this factorise? Um, it might do, so let's have a quick look. Um, so 3x in a bracket and 2x, or it's going to be 6x in a bracket and x. So let's have a quick look. We need to make negative 3, so there's only really um, one possible option. So negative 3 um, plus 1 uh, equals 0. Um, what I mean by there's only one possible option, it, it basically has to be either negative 3 times 1 or 3 times negative 1. Um, so there's only those options and if we look carefully we can see very quickly that um, 3 3 is a 9 and uh, take away 2 will give me 7 so basically that's the combination that works so it will be 3x plus 1 in a bracket 2x take away 3 in a bracket equals 0 and we do a quick check to make sure it works so 3x times 2x is 6x squared um, 3x times negative 3 is negative 9x, but then we've got 1 times 2x, which is 2x, so we end up doing negative 9x plus 2x, which gives us negative 7x, and then we've got 1 times negative 3, which gives me negative 3. So quite often with these kind of questions where you're asked to solve um, with a fraction, um, they'll lead into a quite a nice uh, quadratic that looks a bit complicated, but generally all that tries. If not, you just fall back on the formula. Um, the formula will always work, um, just sometimes takes a bit longer than what you need. And if it's a non calculated paper, then the formula could create some uh, quite big numbers uh, that you've got to deal with. Um, but if it's a non, non calculated uh, paper, hopefully you remember, guys, that it's more than likely to factorise. In fact, it's virtually always going to factorise. So let's have a look then. So this tells me what the solutions will be. So 3x plus 1 has either got to equal 0, or 2x take away 3 has got to equal 0. Well, we rearrange this to make x a subject, so take away 1 means negative 1, and then we're dividing by 3. So one answer is going to be negative 1 third, or the other answer is going to be, well, again, we rearrange this to make x a subject, so we're going to add 3 to that side and then half. So it's going to be 3 over 2. So our solutions will be negative 1 third or 3 over 2. And of course, at the end of the exam, guys, we should put these uh, into this equation just to check it all worked. Okay, so do do the checking. Okay, another type of quadratic um, equation um, that you have to solve with is using a graph to help you. So let's have a just a quick look at uh, the use of graphs. Um, so the same complete the tables. They won't always give you a table. Sometimes they say draw the graph, and that means you've got to create the table. So look out for those kind of questions as well. But they've done most of it for you, so all we've got to do is work out what this one does. So again, the advice is always put negatives in brackets so that you can uh, look at how the substitution works properly. So we've got negative 1 squared. Well, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. I've taken away 2, so that's going to be negative 1. So there's going to be negative 1. And again, it follows the usual pattern that we'd expect. There's a pattern to quadratic graphs where we get this symmetry going on. So let's have a look at plotting the values. We want us to plot the grid. So the values come from pairing up the x and y values to make coordinates. So we end up with this being a coordinate of negative 2, 2, and so on. So negative 2, 2, uh, so negative 2, and 2. And then we've got negative 1 and uh, negative 1. Uh, carefully plotting, that oh, wasn't quite accurate. And then we've got 0, negative 2, and then we've got 1, negative 1, 
and then we've got 2-2. Two, two. Okay, and again, we recognize the quadratic graph should be a smooth curve, making that kind of a U shape, or if it's a negative X squared, then it should be a, like an N shape. Um, so we try and draw the best curve we can, uh, as smooth as we can. So, okay. So draw the best curve we can, as smooth as we can, uh, going through the crosses. There's a bit of tolerance, so I'm slightly out there, but uh, there's a bit of tolerance. You do this in pencil first anyway, and rub that out, and then uh, go back over it. So that's the uh, curve uh, drawn, so we we'll get marks for that. Um, it then says explain how the graph can be used to estimate the solution of. Well, what we've got to remember is that um, the graph is crossing the x-axis and these are called the, the roots of the graph. In other words, when the graph equals zero. And when it says explain how, then we could draw this and we could say we're looking for the roots. So we're looking for the roots of the graph. Um, so basically we're looking for where the graph crosses the x-axis as it will equal zero at these points. So for this one the answers will be there and there. So basically we'd say the answers are x is equal to negative 1.4 and 1.4. So that's what that means. So that's a quick look at uh, quadratics, uh, quadratic equations.